Shaisala, and welcome to episode one of my series Between the Columns. I'm Jail, and I'm going to take you step by step through the Xi'an language of Star System. These are intended as a supplement to the official resources, and I hope that they'll help you on your journey to become a full-fledged xenolinguist. These first few episodes are going to be starting out exactly where I was right at the beginning, trying to puzzle out my name in Xi'an. Translating human names into Xi'an is a fantastic exercise to start with because it will make you familiar with the sounds and the writing style of the language. I'd recommend you watch at least the first two official videos before you watch this one. The first one's a good overview, but this video is really going to focus on that second episode where we they look at the sounds and the writing. For this episode, you're also going to want to keep the full language guide handy, which I've linked in the description. I'll be focusing on how to make the best use of the official resources, so if you're already comfortable with how the letters and the sounds work, feel free to skip to episode 2. The second episode of the official videos is the best source on how the language is meant to sound. I've clipped the sounds from that video, put them in a soundboard which you'll find in the description. Since that video was produced, a formal IPA has been added to the Xi'an language guide, which you'll find on page 100. Though I personally find that the simple guide on page 11 is still the most accessible and therefore most useful resource for day-to-day -day use. For the time being, make sure you're particularly comfortable with the available vowel sounds in the language. Once you're happy with that, we can move on to looking at how characters are written. Xi'an uses an alphabet that's arranged in syllabic blocks, a feature it shares with, for example, Korean. This means that each block represents a full syllable and contains characters that represent specific letters. Each letter and piece of punctuation in the language has an equivalent in the Latin alphabet, which gives us standard Romanized Xi'an or SRX, which like pinyin is a way of representing a character-based language using our alphabet. This is the symbol Xi'an spelled out both in its native script and in SRX. I've color coded the corresponding parts of the character, and I'm gonna to continue to do that throughout the video so you can get a grip for where things are and what matches up. Writing a syllable like this is simply a matter of working out which letters go where in the character. Let's get familiar with this by looking at the alphabet page in the official guide. This might seem intimidating at first, but eventually you're going to start recognising the patterns that are within even the letters that really make this quite simple to learn. For now, we're just going to try and get to grips with the broad categories of letters that you'll encounter. We're going to ignore this entire bottom section at the moment, which contains numerals, punctuation and the pitch markings, you can find consonants on the right, and the remaining sections can be summed up as some sort of vowel for the purpose of building a syllable. On the left, you'll find basic vowels, diphthongs, and a special character for air. It's only slightly different from diphthongs, uh, and it's put in, I think, to make it seem like a little bit of a quirk that makes it seem like a little bit of a less constructed language. Bit of fun. Most vowels and diphthongs have a long form and a short form, with the long form denoted by a macron or line over the vowel. Remember from the official video that e has an alternative pronunciation, a, rather than a long form. R also has a third form, which is pronounced e. Uh. Every basic vowel, diphthong, and the special character a have a corresponding y and u cluster, which are found in the centre of the page. In these, the sound y or w is prefixed to the start of the vowel. Remember, if you see a u followed by it, the other vowels and syllable is usually a w sound, for example in one tool. These complex clusters still behave like vowels in their own right, and to reiterate for the rest of the video, when I say vowel, I'm referring to anything from any of these sections. You'll notice across the page that there are three different types of character listed. These are a 2x2 block form, a 1x2 basic form, and a corner form, which fills the top right of a 2x2 for vowels, or the bottom right of a 2x2 for consonants. Each syllable will eventually be formed by filling out a 2x2 grid with these parts, like a jigsaw. Now let's look at the four ways standard syllables are formed in a native Xi'an word. Syllables are either vowel, consonant vowel, vowel consonant, or consonant vowel consonant. Stepping back slightly to the block, basic, and corner forms we were just looking at, it becomes quite obvious how these four forms are constructed. A vowel-only syllable is the block form which we only had for vowels. Consonant vowel and vowel consonant are made by combining two basic forms. Consonant vowel consonant uses one basic consonant, a corner vowel, and a corner consonant. We are going to encounter some unusual characters at times which do not conform to these patterns, but for the time being these are the most important patterns to know for the vast majority of Xi'an characters. You might notice that only some of the consonants have corner forms. 
This obviously means that they can't go at the end of a CVC syllable because there's no character for that. However, this restriction also applies to VC syllables. If a consonant does not have a corner form, it cannot come at the end of any syllable, referred to as the coda in the official video. For example, you can have lamb and am because m has a corner form. However, although you can conceivably write os, there is no corner form of s, so this is not permitted. The absence of a character in the alphabet also prevents other syllables. You can't put any consonants with where or yeah, and you can only fit an uh in the CBC syllable. The only other rule on consonants is that y can be considered a consonant before a u cluster vowel. So yuang can be written like this and is a CBC syllable, whereas yang is just a VC syllable. There's a fifth syllable type that can be used in non xian words. A basic consonant can be combined with this character, which means zero, to make a muted vowel. We'll return to this idea in the fourth video, and it does not appear in native writing. The final part of a Xi'an syllable is its pitch markings, and we'll be returning to pitch in video three. This concludes our first dive into the Xi'an alphabet. We're going to return to dissect individual letters at a later date. Let's recap most important points. Number one, Xi'an writing is in syllabic blocks containing alphabetic letters. Number two, syllables can take the form V, CV, VC, CVC, or a vowel muted consonant. Number three, the basic block and corner forms of characters act like jigsaw pieces in a two by two grid and can tell you a lot about what you are able to write. And number four, only consonants that have a corner form can come at the end of a VC or CVC syllable. I've prepared some worksheets and answers which are linked in the video description below. If you've enjoyed this episode, please leave a like and subscribe for future content. If you have any questions or feedback about how I could improve, please leave a comment. Jan Lekol, study well, and I hope to see you again soon.